Well, I'm doing my PhD here in political science in, in University of Mab, in the Center of Near and Middle East Studies that we have here in I integrated interdisciplinary center, so I'm in the political side of the center. My, my, my background is purely international relations, so I've been working with international relations, my bachelor, master's, and now I'm doing political science, but I work with IR um, in itself, and I work a lot with the IR theory. I'm from Brazil, so I did my master uh, and my bachelor there. In, in different cities in Brazil, you know, like I did my master in the cap in the capital in Brazil, in the University of Brazil, and then I came here to Germany to start my PhD. Mm -hmm. So I'm on my last year. Oh, hopefully. Yeah, no, congratulations. It's great. <laughs> yeah, my plan is to deliver by the end of the by the middle of the year or something, but by, by, to be defending by the end of the year. So yeah, what my, my thesis is about is pure international relations in terms of understanding uh, the, um, the foreign policy of three countries that I find crucial, crucial for the international system of the Persian Gulf. So my lenses are in the Persian Gulf and I work with Iran, Saudi Arabia and United States. Um, so what I do is that I develop um, a triangular framework of analysis. So I apply this triangular framework to the three countries, more or less in the same level of analysis. So I analyzed all the same factors for the three countries in a very broad period of time. So I'm going from 1960, uh, 1969 until 2014. Oh, so I go from the Shah to Hourani to more or less the, mm -hmm. I go, yeah. So beginning middle of his first presidential term. So that's uh, the approach. Well, the framework that I use is neoclassical realism. So I, 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 went, I go back to the classics of realism to develop a framework that, that kind of like it is a realist framework still, but you open the black box of the states to see which are the factors that are more or less shaping or defining foreign policy decision. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And yeah, basically that's that's, the most broader way you can tell about my thesis because I could keep talking. When I'm oh, no, I love that. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but that's amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, congratulations on uh, getting to the final year of your PhD. Um, good luck with the last few months. I'm sure it's going to be great. Uh, <laughs> thank you so much, of course, for uh, joining us today. And uh, I think your thesis is amazing. It's, it's, it's incredible that you're going from almost two very, very different kinds of world systems from the late mm -hmm. 60s to almost the present day. So that's really important. Um, and I suppose I'm, what I'm curious is to what led you to this PhD topic? I mean, mm -hmm. was the Middle East always something that you were interested in before your PhD? Or is it something that you pursued a little bit later? Yeah, I could tell you that I think the path arriving in this topic was more or less a natural flow of events for me. Mm -hmm. to since my bachelor I've been fascinated by Iran po foreign policy since I could tell you that probably since my second semester which I mock simulated Iran in a UN <laughs> simulation uh, wow okay definitely, definitely I think is if I had to put a starting point I would put it there and okay. since, since then I have been working with Iran foreign policy um, so throughout bachelor i was focused more in Ura iran and us mm -hmm. it was the it was the outcome of the nuclear deal so it was right. a lot of this discussions going on so I was, my master i shift the focus to the regional systems so always regions for me is the most interesting topic of international relations because mm -hmm. basically it's the place where domestic and international are meeting all the time mm -hmm. sure, so you have sure. this mm -hmm. uh, this dynamic uh where you have the system you have the, the systemic pressures or whatever you want to call it but you also have trans transnational identities ideologies ideas you know mm -hmm. a shared mm -hmm. understanding of threats so i always like to understand regions so i shift my focus mm -hmm. to saudi and iran right so my master my master was about saudi and iran um and their role on arab uprisings in the persian gulf so in bahrain and yemen oh okay mm -hmm. uh more or less the this idea of competition and how they they play with roles. I, were, I was more on this 
um, this idea of self-perceived images and how they influence foreign policy, how do, do, do countries project images within the system. Mm. So I've, that was my master's. So basically when I finished my master's, I was like, yeah, where do I go from here? Mm. And well, I always had this idea that when you look to the literature, it's very hard to find analysis that is still focusing on geopolitics and put the three of those actors more or less together on the same mm -hmm. level of analysis. Mm -hmm. Normally it's, it's bilateral or the United States and the region, you know, right. mm -hmm. uh, or Iran and Saudi or Saudi and US. So I felt there was a gap of how can we go a little bit beyond, you know? Right, what yeah, if yeah, yeah. Instead of looking to the bilateral, you look to a little bigger. Mm. So that's how I arrived on this topic. So I feel there was a little natural flow of events mm. for me. Mm -hmm. I would say that is that was the interesting has been long in the making for a while. No, it's nice, and it's nice that in a way you've developed your ideas over a long course of time, which um, which is nice because you know different experiences can sort of inform your your knowledge as well and and you're right I mean those of us who study the Persian Gulf we we tend to see Saudi Arabia we know that Saudi Arabia Iran and the U.S. kind of are on the same boat but we kind of see them quite individually and mm -hmm. personally really so that's nice that um, you're trying to see it in a bigger picture it must be quite difficult though um, because Iran changes quite a bit from mm -hmm. Shah to Islamic Republic do you find that there is a change of policy as well? Yes, definitely, definitely. Mm -hmm. um, so I have the advantage of developing a very, how can I say, I can put things on box on my framework. It's more okay. or less very structured. Mm -hmm. So I have what I call systemic changes to define mm -hmm. the alterations on those triangles. Oh, okay. Those triangle periods. And uh, well, of course, the revolution is a systemic change, right? The revolution right. with the war against Iraq. Mm -hmm. So it, it is automatically a, a, a change in my thesis. So the first chapter is from 69 to 79, which I call... I got you. My triangles have like, very funny names, but this is <laughs> what is called um, the menage à trois. <laughs> yeah, but but this has come the from other literature. Right? I mean, it, it's, 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 it sounds sexier than the twin pillar policy, so... <laughs> it's better than the twin pillar policy. This I took from, from other authors that is working with strategic triangles in Asia right. in the 70s, mm. ah. but I love the names. They're very no, catchy. So yeah, sure. Can... Uh, so this period, yeah. it goes 69, 79, is the, the tendency of the period, yes, is this conservative maintenance of the status quo, of a, a right. Western-friendly status quo, right? And I started in 69 because it's when United States first is kind of forced into develop a, um, a foreign policy to Persian Gulf, right? Because it's when UK leaves mm -hmm. the region. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I have this triangle in which I, I analyze mm -hmm. three intervening variables. So status, identity, and foreign policy actors, mm -hmm. executives is the term I use. So I have, when the revolution happens, especially for Iran, all those three factors, I have to completely work with them again mm -hmm. because you have a completely changed political system, right? Sure. Mm -hmm. While, for example, the variable for identity for United States does not shift that much. Uh, the Iranian, you have this very big sh shift. And that's why for me, it's so important to have this whole theoretical discussion. My, I delve a lot in the theoretical field of IR throughout my PhD. Like I, I went more and more deep than I thought I would uh, because I think that is one of my biggest contributions with the scholarly as a whole. Mm. So my framework allows me to take this massive amount of data and try to more or less tell, uh, tell an, a story that is, not, that is narratively cohesive you can see mm. the dependent the dependent path of history sure but you still can more or less say this changes that this changes the other way around i see yeah. no that's, that's fascinating um <laughs> thank you thank, thank you for sharing that and um i suppose what i'm quite curious about is what has been your main surprises and challenges uh, studying iran and, and this topic mm -hmm. so well as I said to you, right, I've, I've been always fasc fascinated with Iran. Um, mm -hmm. Maybe I cannot even explain very well where the fascination started with. 
No, I think okay. I think the being a Latin America American is is a factor that mm. creates sympathy a lot to study Iran and to to study countries that are um, revi uh, revisionist or at least have a, a anti Western systemic standing. Gotcha. It's, it's, you you get interested, right? You mm. the culture, the history, this you you immediately are driven by the the events of 1953 for example or to the revolution in itself mm -hmm. you go to that factors because as global southerners right <laughs> yeah 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 you can put it like that yeah you get true. you get yeah. close to the idea right mm -hmm. and i think from the fascination of starting to run studying iran from there when i was i don't know 10 years ago mm -hmm. uh you slowly start playing much more to grasp the complexity right of uh, complexity of reality to understand um like there's no villains are evil on iranian story sure. and go mm -hmm. through it and i find i find very interesting political history and the, mm -hmm. the the complex historical path dependency of iranian politics for me is fantastic <laughs> and when mm -hmm. when you think about me what is surprising me beyond that is how many times I've been in rooms with people that are foreign policy specialists on the Middle East, let's say so. Um, that they, they have such a distorted, a demonized view of Iranian foreign policy, mm. right? Mm. And a, a difficulty, right, has always amazed me. Oh, sometimes it almost entertains me, the, <laughs> the blindness that people mm. have, uh, like for their own idiosyncrasies, of their own countries, mm -hmm. but when they look to Iran, it's like it's, it's so easy to cast it as a, mm -hmm. as a you know like irrational actor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I was that for me was always fascinating. How how much have you read about the history of that country to say <laughs> that, right? Yeah. So but it, yeah, it's incredible how that can happen. Mm. It happens a lot. It happens mm. a lot. It's still mm. and this very Esther, westernized uh, westernized view of the country of the region mm -hmm. itself, particularly of Iran mm -hmm. as this, this this stabilizer, you know, mm -hmm. like this irrational actor. Mm -hmm. And for me, it's always been a tendency of when I go to discuss, when I go to places to discuss foreign uh, politics, international politics of Iran, because I, I don't dare too much to go beyond the, the Pahlavi regime in terms of my knowledge. Mm -hmm. uh, but from that on, I can I can sit in a table and discuss about international politics of, mm -hmm. and of I, for me, it's so interesting how sometimes people get shocked when I say Iran is a very pragmatic, uh, interest-driven country. I was like, no, it is a, so. It, no, the ideology plays, of course, but it plays mm -hmm. in many other countries too. Have you stopped to yeah. think about how it plays in your country? Yeah, no, so, that's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the states and the that, UK, yeah, of course. Yeah, of course. Like mm -hmm. those are things that I try a lot to have in my thesis. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, this idea of how identity and pragmatism plays on foreign policy decision, but not only in Iran, but also in Saudi and also United States. Mm -hmm. like, all countries have their own um, self-perceived images, and that plays out on how do they decide to interrelate with other countries uh, in, in in this what we call international relations, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I see. No, no, that's that's uh, you're, you're 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 absolutely right. I mean, we're often. I mean, I know I'm often um, confronted with these very, as as you rightly said, distorted views of Iran, and that's something that I think we can thank the media. We can thank <laughs> um, these kind of preconceived con uh, concepts and notions and very Orientalist uh, point of view on that. So. And that's why it's important to feature research like yours because I think it helps to challenge and helps to complicate that 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 perception. Um, mm -hmm. So so keep going, <laughs> so keep going with that, and um, sort of a and I, I thank you so much for all for answering all these questions and perhaps as a end uh, I'm wondering what you'd like to do with your research. I mean, are you interested in staying on in academia? Are you thinking more uh, in policy making? Uh, where, where do you see yourself? Well, what do I see myself? I think let's put aside the difficulty of labor market being sure. completely messy and especially <laughs> yeah. due to this post-COVID world that we don't know 
for for sure what is going to happen soon. Yeah. But ideally, my 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 main goal is to keep in academia, especially mm -hmm. to keep on teaching, researching, especially teaching. Teaching for me is something that's always uh, it's like it's the part that fulfills me the most is the the, the teaching part. Oh. But I love doing research. I I want to slowly connect. It's, it's that's my postdoc project mm -hmm. we even have a project that but it's my pre-project oh yeah of course yeah yeah you start thinking of these things it's to start going back uh in, intellectually start going back to my origins and start uh, so we start to comparing in le some levels of forms this idea that the middle east and latin america are global south countries and we mm. have theories that are being produced and produced there and by and from those regions that we in IR still are tackling mm -hmm. and uh, this this whole global IR uh, I, uh, activity, you know, like this endeavor of trying to actually really globalize mm -hmm. the internet, the discipline, make it less westernized. Mm -hmm. So one of my goals is to start slowly going, uh, this perspective on going back and start to bringing Latin America back to my studies. Mm -hmm. Actually, yeah. 2017 I presented a, a research about comparing Iran with Latin America in the University of Tehran oh wow and, yeah it was it was an, an autumn school that we were there from organization mm -hmm. between DAD German and the university there and wow. I presented I presented through these lenses of uh, of uh anti-imperialism and resistance how many mm. there are how similarities there is in 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 the 2000s how closer it, uh, their farm their their farm behavior got so i work a little bit with that and that always i was like ah, i'm already have my thesis i love my thesis but uh, this is something that i want to touch in some point of mm, my life sure sure yeah so i think I'm, I'm going more or less to this idea in the future if if i have the chance right <laughs> if i have the no, possibility no, no. Well, I hope so. Well, I hope you will because um, that South-South uh, connection and South-South um, picture is very much missing. Uh, it's funny because even my own research, I work on Britain and Iran. And in my postdoc, I'm also looking at how can I link Iran back to where I'm from, <laughs> Malaysia, mm -hmm. and thinking oh, maybe I would like to sort of bring my own region or my own uh, area into my into my professional mm -hmm. life. So. It's nice to see that um, <laughs> that I'm not the only one. It's always interesting way. when you don't study your own country, right? Yeah, I don't know sure. if you have the same yeah. position, but sometimes I'm asking, like, oh, what is a Brazilian studying Iran, Saudi, and Germany? And <laughs> I was like, yeah, I understand where you're coming from, but uh, the lenses are very interesting that we Absolutely. look at. Mm, sure. Also, uh, we are not. Of course, yes, Brazil is West, but is it still periphery, per periphery of the Western mm. side of the world? Sure. And so we have lenses that are much more critical and also mm. sometimes much more nuanced to look into a region that is also not ours, but mm -hmm. that struggle with colonialism and racism and, and, and um, ex exploitation in similar patterns that we also being South, also being peripheral suffered. Mm. so mm. I always justify my interesting my my interesting point of view not my interest my interest also but my my point of view being a little different and I think probably mm. similar to your case mm. um, but yeah I want to in some point to start connecting more one of uh, one of my my goals is also to apply this triangle to other regions so then again, apply this triangle to Latin America. So, you know, Venezuela, Brazil, and United mm -hmm. States is similar. Does it, do we, sh we see this, this dynamics of, uh, of if one bilateral change, the other two can be affected or not? Because that's mm -hmm. what one of my arguments on my thesis, right? Mm -hmm. So, well, I, I look forward to uh, seeing where your research goes <laughs> from, from now on. Um, <laughs> But in the meantime, thank you so much uh, for talking to yeah. me today. Uh, good luck with the rest of your um, PhD journey. And I'm sure you'll do great. And I, I look forward to uh, hearing great things from you. Thank you so much. <laughs>